for this uh, very interesting introduction, but more so for being so kind to be here with us this early in the morning, <laughs> uh, and uh, that you have come and that you find uh, time um, to speak uh, to uh, the Austrian permanent representative, but also at the moment I'm the president of, uh, of ECOSOC. Uh, as the Austrian permanent representative, I can only say we all share that with you, as you know, uh, in the uh, mounting, uh, in the in the <laughs> on, on mountain issues, uh, in the uh, open working group on the SDGs, uh, Austria was uh, obviously always supporting uh, the issue of, of mountains of, su of sustainability in mountains, um, as well as uh, all uh, gender related issues. Um, I see with some uh, uh, you know uh, pleasure that you also uh, support. Uh, the International Year of uh, Family Farming. Um, also, in this respect, uh, Austria is a country uh, where family farming is the, uh, you know, let's say 90%, 95% of farming in Austria is family farming. Um, that's why we have uh, been uh, supportive of this uh, uh, very much. And uh, I remember in uh, 2013 in Geneva, I was also uh, actually at a side event together with FAO, uh, support, uh, supporting uh, you know the issue of uh, family farming. Um, in Austria, uh, you know we have um, we only speak in hectares, so I hope you uh, can convert that. But uh, the average size of a farm is about 20, uh, 30 hectares, which is not very much. Um, and uh, p farmers in Austria also uh, buy you know buy besides the farm. Um, and uh, the, the land they have, they also uh, have, uh, many of them have uh, some uh, forests. So uh, they, they do not only farming, <coughs> but they do also forestry uh, in, in, uh, in a mix, in a mixture. So you have a forest and you have a farm. And uh, so there is income uh, from uh, both sides. Um, and uh, so, but it is uh, all based on, on family farming. And uh, to uh, maintain uh, family farming under the conditions of uh, you know the uh, you know open market of the European Union, uh, where you have uh, you know areas uh, that are you know flat, and where you can have you know uh, hundred or two hundred hectares uh, easily uh, to uh, maintain family farming and to have uh, it as a as a uh, business that you can live on uh, is extremely difficult. Uh, and uh, so the, there are state subsidies, there are subsidies uh, by the European Union, because the European Union understands, uh, because also of, of Austrian policies there and uh, uh, introducing these policies, without uh, having family farming in mountain areas, you cannot protect the environment. Um, the environment is, uh, can, you know, is, can, is protected through uh, farming, uh, and uh, through family farming, especially in alpine pastures. Uh, we have uh, special programs um, for alpine pastures. Uh, we, like in Kyrgyzstan, uh, we uh, send our cattle in the summer on alpine pastures. The Kyrgyz do that too, uh, to bring their horses or their, their cows up uh, or sheep up on, on, on al alpine pastures uh, up in the mountains. We have that too. And, uh, and to keep these alpine pastures intact, you have to have programs also uh, of support. Um, and there are programs of the European Union that were introduced uh, by, uh, by Austrians uh, who were uh, very influential in uh, uh, agricultural policies in uh, the uh, European Union. The former commissioner for agriculture <coughs> was an Austrian, uh, Franz Fischler, for 10 years. And he could uh, really change uh, European agricultural policies, uh, especially also orienting them uh, for an understanding uh, to uh, have uh, sustainable farming also in mountain areas. Uh, he comes from Tyrol, uh, that's why he understands what that means, uh, how, to, how to run uh, a family farm in mountain areas. So I'm very pleased that you also work on this, because this is really an important issue. It is an important <laughs> issue, not only in, uh, in mountainous countries, but it is an important issue in Africa. In Africa, you have family farming. Now the Chinese come and uh, take over uh, you know, hundreds or, or thousands of hectares 
uh, in, into uh, farming or uh, Indians or Arab countries, but uh, still family farming is the basis. And uh, so I think uh, this is uh, extremely important to work on this, to promote this, to promote the understanding and to also promote an understanding among uh, you know, students here how important family farming is uh, in, um, I for sustainable development uh, all over the world. Uh, I'm, I was very pleased, uh, just to change the subject, to see my colleagues uh, here in, from New York, uh, the former Hungarian ambassador, uh, Kurishi Chaba, the Hungarians always use the family name first, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the first name then second, that's why Kurishi Chaba. Um, and uh, you know, Macharia Kamal, uh, the fantastic uh, perm uh, permanent representative of uh, Kenya, um, who is now also uh, one of the co-facilitators for the outcome document uh, for the post-2015 development agenda to be adopted uh, in uh, September. I will uh, have a lecture at one o'clock and I will speak more about this than uh, in at the one o'clock lecture so I don't want to repeat myself, should you have time, uh, and I would be very pleased if you can come at this uh, uh, one o'clock lecture. And I was also very pleased to see my dear friend and colleague, the permanent representative of Kyrgyzstan here, uh, is uh, uh, one, one of the people here on the, on the, uh, in, in the video. Uh, we uh, work with them uh, very, very closely. Uh, Macharya Kamau uh, is really, he will be um, the permanent representative of Kenya, will be a gentleman who will go into history because he will be the one to do not only uh, you know, the open working group on the sustainable development goals uh, to uh, develop those goals, but then to bring his whole agenda to an end. Um, to, so he has, uh, it, if I may put it that way, uh, not from A, because A was uh, you know, the uh, conference in Rio, the Rio Plus 20 mm -hmm. conference, uh, so he was. He had. He didn't have a major role in the conference, but I would say that he took the process from G uh, to Z, and uh, and that is really something uh, which is uh, extraordinary. And he, I'm sure he will go into history books. And uh, you, uh, my dear friends from Africa, although you are from West Africa, you can be proud of your co, you know, fellow African uh, from East Africa because Macharia is just an outstanding personality and extre intellectually extremely strong. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's uh, truly impressive. And he had to work also under very strong pressure uh, from, from home, uh, not on the issue of uh, uh, you know, now sustainable development, but I don't know whether you remember that his president uh, was indicted at the International uh, you know, Criminal uh, you know, the Court of Justice Tribunal, tribunal uh, in The Hague um, on uh, uh, the incidents in Kenya in, in connection with the elections, I think it was 2008. And uh, so there was a great pressure also on him whether, you know, how to, uh, how to uh, advise his president uh, whether to go to The Hague or not. And I think uh, you, you must have heard that uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta then uh, went uh, to The Hague um, uh, which was uh, an unprecedented and uh, unexpected move. And uh, Macharia was uh, his main advisor in this respect. And I understand that uh, uh, Dr. Butler uh, already for a long time has tried to have uh, Macharia here. He will be an absolute asset for you here because he can tell you uh, things that uh, the president of ECOSOC will not be able to tell you. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really interesting. As to ECOSOC, uh, just uh, some uh, words. Um, you know that this is a charter body of the United Nations. So ECOSOC exists since the San Francisco Conference of 1945. Uh, I mean, it didn't come into being already in 1945, but uh, since, since 1945, along with uh, uh, the uh, General Assembly, the Security Council, uh, the General Secretary, and then also the Trusteeship Council. The Trusteeship Council doesn't have much of a role anymore because decolonization has uh, virtually come to an end with some very, very few exceptions. Uh, but uh, so it is these uh, major four bodies 
uh, and uh, the uh, international uh, international uh, court of uh, justice um, that are the charter bodies of the United Nations. And ECOSOC has uh, 54 members. The membership uh, usually uh, lasts for three years, but there are uh, changes uh, so that uh, um, governments uh, tend to uh, make deals with other governments and say we, we serve for two years and uh, uh, you take over one of our year. And this works pretty well. And, and ECOSOC with this new uh, sustainable development agenda will be the key body of the United Nations for coordination, for coordination of the implementation. And uh, so uh, it will be a fascinating uh, time to, uh, in the future, uh, to be president of ECOSOC. I'm president of ECOSOC for a period of one and a half years. Uh, usually the period is only one year, but uh, to align uh, ECOSOC and the work of ECOSOC uh, with uh, the new uh, development agenda and uh, to make uh, coordination and cohesion uh, uh, better and stronger. Um, ECOS the presidency of ECOSOC was changed from uh, the beginning of the year to the beginning of the year, from the, from the year cycle to a summer to summer cycle. And there had to be one president to make the transition, and by coincidence, this is me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I will also go into history, uh, but not like Macharia. Uh, <laughs> I go into history as, uh, as being the one president of ECOSOC who serves for one and a half years. Uh, and uh, But I hope that I will also, uh, so to say, uh, have my <coughs> contributions to history, especially as to the issue of uh, the implementation of the post-2015 agenda, the monitoring, the issue of uh, accountability, and also, and this is a very important point for you here, the cooperation, the coordination uh, with uh, the um, multi-stakeholders. And uh, you are, uh, so to say, one of the multi-stakeholders as uh, a group of, uh, you know, of uh, science, as universities, but also uh, there will be, uh, there are the multi-stakeholders of, of NGOs, and uh, uh, who have uh, consultative status with uh, uh, the ECOSOC, uh, but also not only those who have consultative status with ECOSOC. Um, and uh, it will be very important to have uh, these uh, multi-stakeholders, the partners on board for the implementation of the post-2015 agenda. You need science, you need uh, the business sector, uh, and you need uh, all the NGOs for uh, implementation, but also for the control of implementation and for holding the leaders accountable uh, for the implementation of the agenda. And accountability is obviously the main issue. And your uh, groups that you have here, uh, your student groups, are the groups then to monitor when uh, does the implementation work, do they do the right thing, and uh, if you think they don't, uh, you know, so you hold them uh, especially accountable. And uh, so the issue of accountability, especially on the national levels, is, is absolutely key. And this is key for the United States, in as much as for Mali, in as much as for Kyrgyzstan, in as much as for Austria. Uh, because the post-2015 agenda, other than the uh, MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals is a global agenda. Uh, and I will speak about that uh, in my lecture uh, on at one o'clock. It is there for all of us. And if you look at the way the goals are formulated, uh, it is there for all of us. And your initiative is correct. Mountains is not only mountains in developing countries. It is mountains in, uh, in our part of the world too. Your mountains, our mountains, uh, and uh, uh, which suffer uh, because of climate change. So uh, it is a global agenda, and uh, and it's a global, so to say, it's a global accountability. So you have your people, hold your people accountable. It will be difficult in the United States to hold them accountable uh, on a UN agenda. It will be, I don't know whether you have had that in the United States already. Uh, and uh, it will be interesting how this will be implemented. 
you know that the uh, United States is one of those countries in the world that signs up the least to international conventions. And if you have to have your president uh, speaking, addressing the General Assembly, saying uh, in front of the General Assembly, we hope that we will finally be able uh, to ratify uh, the uh, Convention on Disabilities, uh, you know, then uh, this is not only interesting that the President says it so openly, but it also shows that there is a long way to go for the United States in the understanding of, uh, of I'm sorry to say that that openly, but uh, in, in, in the understanding of, uh, of international responsibilities. And, uh, and so you have also in your country uh, a very interesting task. Uh, and uh, because uh, it's accountability here too. Um, I don't want to agitate you, but it's uh, it's a it's it's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Probably shouldn't be agitated. It's a fact, and uh, it is it will also be a fact for us. I know in Austria, um, pe <coughs> people don't think about the fact that this 2015 agenda applies to us too, and uh, that we will have to have our own. Uh, mechanisms of accountability uh, in Austria too. Uh, and this will be also a qualitative, if I may say so, leap. Uh, and, uh, and, the and, <coughs> and the African countries on a global uh, level uh, have then also the chance to talk about uh, accountability uh, in respect of the developed world. Do you live up to your uh, obligations on, on, on giving aid. And uh, you know that uh, your, your uh, you know, uh, GNI, uh, uh, your, your ODA uh, is, is about 0.3% and uh, for e in the US. So you need more than double it to, go to get up to the 0 0.7 standard. Uh, in the European Union, it is 0 0.43 on an average. But there are countries like, unfortunately, also mine, uh, which are far from the 0 0.7. Uh, <coughs> so that's a that's a that's a question, then also to uh, have uh, uh, the developing countries uh, to hold the developed countries accountable. Will be an interesting, very interesting agenda for the next 15 years. I really love what you said about.
you said it in a meeting room in New York, you will have the whole audience. <laughs> <laughs> we can bring her. Um, well, I don't have any farming experience, but um, well, we were just really excited to talk to you um, because you come from such an amazing mountain country. I love Austria. If I had to, if I had to pick a city in Europe to live in right now, it would be Vienna. No, but, but that's no not really the mountains. <laughs> yeah, not the mountains, sorry. <laughs> but um, we were mostly excited to talk to you about any ideas you had for us or anyone we could get in contact with to help us with our goals with the conference and um, with spreading the UN Sustainable Mountain Goals and especially the gender agenda, which is something that's really important to me. Um, but just any ideas you had for us or anyone we could talk to, we'd be excited about this, these issues as well. Um, that's, a, that's a good question. We have, we've had, uh, somebody else wants to say something and I comment on, on it all, or shall I comment it right away? Well, Issues um, like the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership and the U.S.-EU Trade and, um, and Investment Agreement, um, how those things will affect um, sustainability, specifically mountain sustainability. Um, those are the things that I that I learned. I would like to add, uh, we, we tried to pursue ECOSOC NGO status uh, these years ago. Uh, sadly, because of the institution being public institution, we were, were not able to, to achieve, but that was our main goal, so we can have our members uh, promoting all these kind of events at the uh, you know, NGO discussions every year. But we're, we're still working on something that, that we can try to achieve so we can bring students uh, m more faster and you know, a more efficient way to the ECOSOC and present. Oh yeah. So right now we're pursuing uh, to become a chapter of UNA USA, uh, which will allow us to uh, work closer with the United Nations Foundation on you know, all the agenda that we're developing here, um, especially the essay contest and the, inter uh, the Women of the Mountains Conference, which are our main uh, events that we carry every year, uh, and we're trying to promote uh, you know, all over the world. And we have. We have been involved in uh, international events uh, in Peru, uh, Rio Plus 20, um, Turkey, uh, where else? Rum? Anyway, uh, so, and we have had students go to those. Well, you know, honestly, I, I, I think that this is, this is fascinating that you can uh, mobilize people here. Uh, it is obvious, uh, if, you, if you have a university in such an environment, uh, it is probably uh, sometimes uh, easier to do that uh, and to, to raise awareness than in other places. Uh, but uh, I do think that this is uh, truly important now, uh, your question. Uh, if, if I, if I think I should give you an honest answer. And the honest answer is that I will have to go to the Secretariat back uh, in, in, in New York um, to uh, get in contact with you. You give me your uh, contact details okay. um, to uh, tell you uh, exactly how the networking in, in your area uh, works. I just, uh, you know, I'm not uh, familiar with this networking on, on mountain issues and uh, especially in, in relationship uh, to youth. I, I know the general uh, concept and the general uh, projects, uh, but I don't know, so to say, the networking at the conference uh, 
conferences that go on. So, uh, but what you should do uh, next year is, unfortunately, if I had been here before, I would have had you. We have uh, an ECOSOC Youth Forum, uh, which takes place uh, once a year, and uh, we just had it last week on uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, with uh, youth from more than 70, 80 countries from all over the world for two days, and we were discussing only uh, the new post-2015 agenda. And it was just unbelievable uh, what, you know, what kind of, you know, I interventions were there from, from young people really from all over the world. And uh, I don't think, to be honest, uh, that we had uh, uh, people speaking about what we are speaking now here. Uh, and uh, about uh, you know sustainability of, of mountain areas, you know gender issues, uh, in this in this respect, uh, I don't I don't recall that there were people obviously from uh, Bolivia, uh, from Peru speaking about uh, the uh, specific situations in their mountainous countries, uh, but uh, probably not from only the angle of uh, sustainability, uh, and uh, so. Uh, I think you should, I, I will, I will uh, get you in contact with the people who do that. Um, if you uh, go on, on the webcast of the UN, uh, you can see, uh, okay, it's two days, so then you can't watch all these two days, but it was unbelievably interesting uh, how this uh, youth forum went uh, last week uh, and uh, what kind of discussions we had. We had uh, President of uh, the Parliament uh, from Ecuador, a young lady, 31 years old, uh, unbelievably energetic, uh, very, very interesting, um, very outspoken, uh, quite critical of, uh, of uh, to say, uh, developed country ideologies, uh, but uh, very well put, very interesting. We, the UN now has also uh, a special envoy on youth issue, use if issues, uh, a Jordanian by the name Ahmed al um also very outspoken. He's the special representative of the Secretary General on youth issues. And uh, you can also see the Secretary General, he came to this youth forum now for the second year in a row, and uh, how he speaks about uh, youth issues, at, about sustainability, it's uh, it's fascinating. So if you have a chance, do have do load it down, yeah. and uh, if you if you give me your uh, whatever kind of if I, uh, we will I will try to get back to you through the secretariat to give you a, a, a good answer. And, uh, yeah, okay. thousands of women and uh, for, for this uh, you know CSW and uh, side events on God knows what <laughs> and uh, it's 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 incredible and uh, so it and uh, you know that the, the Commission on the status of women is a subsidiary body of ECOSOC reporting to ECOSOC and they report always in a very so to say uh, Way. Yeah, strong way. So it's 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 re it's really interesting, and all the issues that uh, we have now uh, in in women questions, we are uh, un unfortunately in a situation uh, where the issue is protect what we have already achieved, because uh, so to say the pendulum uh, is actually swinging swinging backwards, and uh, that is something. Uh, so on women issues, um, the the. The, the main question is protection of what is achieved. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate your speaking forthrightly on some real challenges and students 
bringing up global issues like DPP. And you know, I, I uh, love being in, in Austria and Gutenberg and Kenya on Mount Kenya and Kyrgyzstan and Al Archa and Pamir. And, and I've seen you know, and mountaineers see the Danish and the glaciers. And now, right now, in the last week, we've had four consecutive days of century old uh, temperature records broken by fives of degrees um, and from different parts of the last hundred years. And the, the snowpack there is not very encouraging. And this is sustainable, the state sustainability of mountain cultures. And we're right now arguing about Canadian tar sands. So the, very much the issues that, that we're bringing up our own developed countries' responsibilities for. That's not going to make things better. <laughs> You know the the main thank issue. You thank you. Thank you. The main issue will be the conference in Paris at the end of this year, uh, COP twenty one on climate uh, the development. The post twenty fifteen development agenda has one goal on climate issues, which is in brackets, uh, because this goal is on climate, but it is not negotiated in New York. It is the separate climate process. Um, and uh, the conference will take place in, uh, the main conference will take place in Paris. And you can only cross your fingers. If we look at the, Aust if I look at the Austrian glaciers, horrible. And last year in Austria, the hottest year of Austria in all times, in the average, in all times. Uh, you know, in, in Vienna in the summer, if we continue like that, we're gonna have subtropical climate. That's not good what I said.